Welcome to Founders in Biotech. In this podcast, biotech entrepreneurs share their founders' journey and scientific achievements. I'm your host, Sergey Glinka. Today's guest is Kiyoshi Takayama. Kiyoshi Takayama has received a PhD in pharmaceutical science from the University of Tokyo. After his PhD, he worked for more than 12 years as a research scientist at Taisho Pharmaceutical in Japan. Well, there he was involved in the development of G-protein-coupled receptors, short GPCRs, as assays, and conducted various drug discovery programs for chronic inflammation and chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, short COPD. But in 2006, Kiyoshi left Taisho, which I'm excited to talk with him about, and founded NB Health Laboratory, a technology platform company for the generation of functional monoclonal antibodies targeting these receptors, GPCRs. And B Health Laboratory is pioneering a new field of GPCR-targeted drug discovery by targeting GPCRs specifically for lipid-mediator ligands using the monoclonal antibodies. Thank you so much, Kiyoshi, for joining us on Founders in Biotech today. Uh, thank you very much, and thank you for the deep introduction. We would like to learn more about you, um, your experience with education, and what did you study, where and why, and what inspired you to become a scientist? Initially, that uh, I study in the pharmaceutical uh, science in the Tokyo University. I spent uh, almost uh, six years of pharmaceutical uh, science field. And at that time, I studied to the generation of the monoclonal antibody in university. And uh, mm -hmm. my first paper is a generation of the, some monoclonal antibody for the enzyme. And uh, it was so very nice technology, but almost 13 years ago, nobody care about the antibody is a commercial uh, as a modality for the medicine. Mm -hmm. And then I entered to the uh, classical, so-called classical small molecule company, Taisho. Mm -hmm. And uh, so my background is uh, that almost, uh, I learned 80, 1989, I remember first paper for the monoclonal antibody. For mm -hmm. the, this is the first my monoclonal antibody, which has a functional monoclonal antibody. And then at that time, I don't have uh, any skill to from the lead monoclonal antibody to medicine. So totally forget. But uh, mm -hmm. 13 years later, I start on my company uh, to generate new monoclonal antibody. Oh, that's interesting. So already uh, at the university as a student you generate you're in touch with um, generation of monoclonal antibodies so could you if, if possible talk a bit about more your your phd what was the topic um uh yes so this is also our major target uh, my C uh, phd t program is a uh, lipid to mediator lipid to mediator so mm -hmm. it's called so that, for example, the cluster glandin, lysolipid, mm -hmm. and it is a good target for the inflammation and cancer. So mm -hmm. I uh, discovered the new enzyme which uh, produced such a uh, lipid mediator mm -hmm. uh, named the host lipase A2. Mm -hmm. Now very f famous enzyme and uh, it is target for the aspirin and uh, other anti-inflammatory mm -hmm. reagent. And uh, I found uh, my target and then I start to generate monoclonal antibody toward uh, this target. At that time, at that time, there is no inhibitor for such a, such a target. Mm -hmm. But uh, surprisingly, I generate uh, monoclonal antibody which has uh, inhibit our target mm -hmm. enzyme so that I feel the potential that mm -hmm. antibody is a good uh, modality to mm -hmm. even the uh, the enzyme to so maybe 
if we, I have a humanize technology or develop technology, I want to develop the, the new, new inhibitor instead of small molecule. That, mm. that my PhD students tema. And after mm. then, many, many company try to the generate mono, a small molecule for our target, but it is quite difficult. But mm -hmm. antibody has very rapidly generate the antagonist uh, compound. So that, so almost 13 years ago, I have, I know that potential that antibody is a new modality instead of the small molecule. That's very interesting. So, um, I'm come more from the uh, small molecule world, but um, we'll we'll take a deeper dive um, in in a minute. But um, so you you have a successful PhD, you have a successful career at Taisho where you work with GPCRs, but but then after twelve years you start you decide to start an own company uh, where you have a successful career, which is uh, then the question why. Why would you start an own company? And um, like m many people think you have a safe job in a corporate <laughs> world. Uh, and then you say, I want actually to do something different. What was the trigger to, to do that? Yes, so many uh, my colleague and uh, many friends said, Kiyoshi is kind of a mutant of Japanese salary <laughs> and uh, 99% of Japanese, uh, uh, the salaryman and the employee joined to the big company. They never think such a my career. So, mm -hmm. so all yeah. of, all of them, uh, Japanese colleagues say, you are stupid. But, but, <laughs> but my, the, before leaving the Taisho, I spent the two years in the post Brigham Women's Hospital in Cambridge, Boston. Mm -hmm. And, uh, my previous mentor said, Oh, Kiyoshi is congratulations. They said, so mm -hmm. I think, uh, uh very, uh, encourage me to, to the establish new business. So, mm. so the trigger is the two, I have two triggers. So one is, uh, I spent uh, two years, uh, in Boston area and, uh, they have a good uh, ecosystem and mm -hmm. they have a society, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. a company, big company, and uh, Harvard Medical School, mm -hmm. uh, MIT, and then a venture company. Is, uh, they survive to three type of uh, uh, companies uh, or organizations survive and, and uh, interact very, very uh, unique. Mm -hmm. So. So that the uh, first trigger is uh, I want to uh, become a, such a, uh, a joint to such an environment mm -hmm. in Japan. So this is a one trigger. And second trigger is uh, Taisho is nice company. And uh, uh, when I enter to Taisho, they spend a lot of money to, to mm -hmm. the, uh, discover new target or discover mm -hmm. Genome, sci genome science, but uh, we didn't have any good success track record. And mm -hmm. then uh, our uh, director and uh, top uh, uh, changed to the business model, more conservative. Mm. This is a second trigger. Mm -hmm. So that uh, I want to do the fasting class. And I want mm -hmm. to do the new thing. So, so two trigger, we, I have two trigger and then mm. I start to own my company. But mm. initially, uh, I don't, I, I didn't think about, the uh, have a laboratory and, uh, now I have a uh, 20 employee. So initially I just mm, doing the consultation and I just, uh, uh private, so private company, mm. but, mm -hmm. Now I have uh, 20 people and s s something, mm. something happened to that. We are challenging to become a, a global biotech company. 
Absolutely. So um, I like also the the first trigger that do did I understand it correctly? You wanted to create also an ecosystem uh, similar that you experienced yes. in Boston also yes. in, in in Japan on. Um, we can talk about this later. I think that's that's very important because such ecosystems are inspiring when you see that science can be developed fast into something that is tangible. Um, yes. But let's let's take a deeper dive into the technology and how you discover monoclonal antibodies. So most GPCRs are addressed by small molecules in chronic diseases. Yes. And yes. So you said you have been able to develop monoclonal antibodies for the receptors early on. Were they are superior compared to uh, small molecules in their yes. action or affinity? So feel free to use very specific and technical terms here. So this is uh, from my experiment. So during during Thai show, I conducted a GPCR pro project, several GPCR project to generate small molecule. Mm -hmm. And uh, we spent a huge money to high throughput screening. Mm -hmm. And uh, indeed, we can, uh, we could get the uh, lead compound to mm -hmm. bind the target and uh, they have some functional, but uh, we have some problem to, to the optimization due mm -hmm. to the, uh, the small molecule has a not good for the atomic profiling or soon, or, uh, soon bind to the protein. And, uh, sometimes a small molecule bind another target. We mm -hmm. said off target. Oh. So many cases, uh, we, uh, drop the project, not the functionality or binding, but mm -hmm. drop due to the side effect or toxicology mm -hmm. and uh, atomy profile. So that we, I have a uh, many, many, uh, and success, uh, failure to, mm -hmm. so that I, I change my mind to the, the antibody itself, mm -hmm. very simple, uh, atomy profile in body and also they have a very, very uh, selectivity toward the target. So, so that even the GPCR, if we generate monoclonal antibody, we, uh, antibody can overcome potential problem, which a small molecule has. And, uh, so their biggest pharmaceutical company, Takeda, Takeda has, uh, had keen interest in uh, GPCR 20 years ago when they generate a small molecule, a lot of small molecule mm -hmm. entered and entered the clinical test. But mm -hmm. most of them uh, drop due to the side effect or mm -hmm. adverse event or off target. So I think uh, target itself is good, but the uh, modality, mm -hmm. small molecule has a limited to, to, to the launch for the launching so that uh, I change uh, idea from small molecule to to GPC uh, antibody yeah so, uh, I understand so the 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 idea is to overcome the problems that small molecules have when you enter yes. clinical trials and with yes. the GPCRs you have also a challenging a challenging issue with agonist antagonist partial agonist partial antagonist so it's uh, becoming very complex and we have a lot of gpcrs in our body mm -hmm. and may i ask if you can talk about during your time at taisho have you proposed this strategy actually uh, to yes yes <laughs> yes so taisho itself uh just uh, prior to leaving my leaving Taisho, they decide to invest to the biologics. But uh, mm. I think uh, two years before uh, leaving Taisho, I propose that 
that uh, uh, antibody mm -hmm. I want to generate to the antibody for the membrane protein, GPCR, and mm -hmm. indeed, uh, Taisho, uh, they didn't allow me to, uh, to the start new project, but uh, they accept to me to start a, as a research tool to generate monoclonal antibody targeting GPCR. And uh, I will, I spend that uh, one year, one year to generate the monoclonal antibody targeted specific GPCR. But that was uh, almost 19 years ago. Mm -hmm. the, uh, we don't, I don't have enough, enough technology to yeah. generate. So, uh, current, so which we already have currently, so that uh, uh, I can I couldn't obtain any good even the research tool. Yeah. We can couldn't we couldn't generate monoclonal antibody target GPCR. I understand it was not fast enough and effective enough for you to to move inside the organization and from from what I learned if. If, you, if someone is establishing a new scientific direction, you have to go all in and really focus and move fast so you can get the data and the results um, mm -hmm. to uh, validate the hypothesis. And uh, let's go back a bit to lipid mediator GPCRs. So why are, are they difficult to target also with monoclonal antibodies compared to peptide receptors or chemo chemokine receptors? Yes, yes. So uh, you can imagine so that the uh, antibody is so big and uh, if the bind to the uh, GPCR for chemokine and peptide, so big antibody uh, can easily block to access to the chemokine or a peptide, mm -hmm. but uh, lipid mediator is so small, and uh, if bind to the, even if the antibody bind mm -hmm. to the GPCR, they have many space to enter to small molecule to, to the GPCR. Oh, so, okay. so that uh, uh, our first uh, antibody targeting GPCR for the lipid mediator, this antibody pinpointly bind to the pocket, mm, yeah. very very small pocket. So, but uh, if if it challenged to the chemokine GPCR, peptide GPCR, they can uh, uh, antibody is so, so huge, so that uh, they can uh, compete to to the chemokine or small peptide. So that uh, I said chemokine receptor, right, right now, including us, uh, many company try to the chemokine GPCR antibody. And I think uh, three, appro approximately three is in clinic. Mm -hmm. But lipid mediator GPCR so difficult. Mm. Okay, it's probably that the ligand of the receptor is 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 aliphatic or linear, and it can diffuse into the into the binding pocket. So you have Bind to the block, pocket. yeah, yes, block specifically the binding binding pocket. Yes, and, exactly. And the challenge is there. So the typical way to create monoclonal antibodies is this hybridoma approach, but. Um, your company is doing something different. Yes. So, so uh, the uh, usually the people uh, generate monoclonal antibody. We need a protein, purified protein, mm -hmm. to immunize for screening, etc. But you can imagine that the GPCR is too difficult to purify from the membrane. Yes. Espe In especially the keep the structure, the, the native structure, mm. almost impossible. Mm. And also, if you try to ELISA to screen the antibody, so we need a purified 
very very purified uh, high high purified protein, but it is mm. difficult. So that uh, the uh, instead of uh, protein, we can we use the plasmid, which mm-hmm. express the GPCR in cell or in vivo. Mm-hmm. And uh, even we cannot, even if we cannot purify the protein perfectly, we just need a uh, need a sequence itself. Yeah. And now, messenger RNA vaccine for COVID nineteen is popular. Mm-hmm. The I said that. Uh, Asian method is a plasmid itself. So mm-hmm. currently messenger RNA, but uh, our method is the Asian of the messenger RNA system. Mm-hmm. We uh, inject to the plasmid, which express, uh, translate to the target mm-hmm. in muscle cell, and muscle cell express the target in native, and then uh, the antigen presenting cell access to, to, to the target GPCR. This is a one step, two step need to the plus messenger RNA, but the concept is very similar. Yeah, I understand. So um, the second question would be once the muscle cells produce the receptor, Yes. Um, how is the immune system is triggered to develop antibodies against this good, receptor? Good question. So uh, we fuse uh, some uh, protein from the E. coli mm. and uh, this protein kind uh, uh, act as an adjuvant effect. So mm. if we uh, inject to the, just for the GPCR itself, mm-hmm. Uh, GPCR has, uh, human GPCR has a highly homology to the mice or other GPCR so that uh, we fuse uh, uh, some protein from E. coli mm. and then we can increase immunogenicity yeah. and, and then the immune system trigger to, to, to recognize uh, target GPCR as a new antigen. Yeah, and you have you have couple of you have IP for for the technology and for this approach that we have discussed. Is yes. this is this the the way you've been able to uh, with your team to uh, to identify monoclonal antibodies for uh, lipid mediator uh, GPCRs um, that is more specific? Is the so I'm I'm fascinated by immune reaction in general, but it's actually a st- statistical process, right? So um, the, the body generates many versions, right? So was this approach more successful uh, compared to others because you trigger a stronger reaction and a higher variety of um, antibodies where you can then select uh, the best ones? Yes, exactly, exactly. Mm-hmm. So using the protein or using so some company, some researcher can purify the protein, but this is a one aspect of the structure. But mm-hmm. uh, using the DNA immunization, uh, the in vivo, they uh, express many type of structure and many stru- uh, structure depend on the pathophysiological condition so that uh, our library of the monoclonal antibody target GPC has so variety. So mm-hmm. some of the N-terminal bind, some of the bind to the yeah. extracellular domain, etc. And uh, someone, uh, some antibody has a free antagonist, someone, someone, someone is a uh, partial antagonist. Mm. So, so exactly DNA immunization method allow us to get that diverse library of mm. potential antibody. Okay. And as the next step, you probably just to f- finalize this thought, you select for um, mechanism of action, whether it's an agonist, antagonist, partial, 
Yes. And also the affinity probably, right? Yes. So uh, our key st strategy in it, first screening is ju just uh, find the binder, bind, mm. binder of the target. And uh, one campaign, we can get the 100 or 200 unique binder. After then, we profile, we characterize, so 100 antibody using a functional assay. Mm. Uh, and then we can, so we found that this is a just binder, or mm. this is a free antagonist, and this is a biased antagonist. Mm. So, mm. so, uh, but uh, as, uh, to be honest, the fully agonist for the GPCR antibody is still challenging. We don't have any mm. success track. We have a moderator uh, accelerate to the, with small amount of, uh, with the existence of small uh, amount of ligand. But so far we cannot generate to the fully agonist GPCR antibody. This is our challenging and uh, mm. my staff is now challenging and uh, maybe the pharmaceutical company have keen interest and every time they ask mm. me to the, how about the agonist? Antibody? Agonist. Good agonist. Yeah. yeah. It's probably you need a activated or a, a DNA sequence that has some mutations, stabilizes a certain yes. conformation. Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly. So, so, so right now, initially, we just immunize the, the GPCR without any mutation mm -hmm. as a plasmid. But recently, as you guess, that uh, we mutate some mm -hmm. very yeah. in, intracellular or membrane uh, uh, integrate point to, mm -hmm. and then some. Uh, fix uh, some structure and uh, some cases we we can we can get a weak and uh, agonist but mm. this is not good for still not good for the therapeutic purpose but uh, this is a way mm. this is a very uh, promising way to mm. add uh, mutate the other uh, mutation yeah very interesting I need to switch gears. One last question regarding the technology, which you can share in a non-confidential way. Could, could you talk about the milestones that have been achieved so far with, uh, since you started the company in 2006, because it's actually a long journey, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so with, with the company. So what were the milestones where you say this is from the scientific point of view was a breakthrough um, or maybe a, an application of the antibodies you have discovered uh, that were quite positive and, and surprising? So my company has a long history, almost 17 years old. And uh, yeah. but uh, I changed my business model to the several time. So in the uh, first 10 years, we provide a service as a CRO, and mm. but uh, providing the service so generate monoclonal antibody or uh, develop the assay system or the screening. Mm. But in the parallel, we develop to the DNA immunization method and the other mm. method. So uh, approximately eight the seven years ago, from 2016, we mm -hmm. can dramatically change to the business model from mm -hmm. CRO to drug discovery company. And uh, current, uh, most latest technology uh, established in 2018, just five years ago. From that point, uh, we uh, accelerate, accelerate to generate the new monoclonal antibody target GPCR. And uh, we have uh, almost 10 or 12 pipeline. And uh, my first milestone is to the, we say license out to, to the mm -hmm. uh, global pharma, especially the antibody itself, we can get the uh, fix a final sequence 
And、uh, our antibody itself kind of a classical antibody. So、mm. uh, instead of us, the company, biotech、mm. company or big company can rapidly generate the、mm. manufacturing and clinical、yeah. tests. So that our first milestone, the, the pharmaceutical company or big biotech company recognize our antibody so nice.、Mm. And、uh, this, they have a potential. To enter to the, to the manufacturing clinical test.、Yeah. And the、uh, future our milestone that、uh, we, we will conduct clinical tests by ourselves. Because I, I feel that、uh, modality itself is unique, but also in our company, think about the new therapeutic concept or new therapeutic strategy. So,、mm. I want to prove the concept in human, not animal. So that uh,、yeah. uh, we, we have a 10, 10 project, but、uh, one of the 10, I want to、uh, for the clinical、yeah. test by ourselves and、uh, to prove the concept. And、uh, if we can prove the concept,、uh, we can enjoy to do that. Any time, many times to new type of GPCR antibody because our platform itself is can accept,、uh, applicable for any type、mm-hmm. of GPCR map, cancer,、mm-hmm. metabolic diseases, lipid mediator GPCR, big proteins. So, so initially, we should once prove the concept, we can enter our antibody,、yeah. can enter the clinical test or Big global pharma r e c o g n i z e our quality of、mm. our antibody quality. That's my、uh, milestone. That's, Initial that's very milestone. exciting. Milestone. That's very exciting. So I didn't know that you started as a CRO, but during the time as a CRO, you, you have those, those patterns that you,、uh, the IP that you develop, and then you switch the model. And、yes. I mean, within five years, having 12 assets in the pipeline that you Offer for partnering at this stage、yeah. is a tremendous achievement, I would say. Yeah, thank you. And also, that、uh, we can get a fund from the venture capital in Japan, also、yeah. from China, so、yeah. over outside of Japan. So, yeah, this, this it was triggered by the achievement of the new technology platform.、Yeah. Very exciting, very exciting.、Um, it takes a long time. Let's, let's switch. Thanks for sharing the,、uh, the technological part of,、um, of the company. And let's get more practical as entrepreneurial.、Mm-hmm. So let's talk about practical aspects、uh, of starting a company. And looking back on, your, for example, your time at Taisho, what skills and skill set? Was really helpful what you learned there that was applicable in, in your own company? Yes, so Taisho is a little bit small company, and so that、uh, I had a many task r o l e in Taisho, especially、mm-hmm. as a project management.、Mm-hmm. So I think my experiment project as a project management in Taisho is very、uh, useful. To、mm-hmm. manage to the company.、Mm. So, because、uh, I, I learned to the, how much need to, to conduct some experiment and、mm. uh, how do you organize to the team. To, and、uh, at that time, I have a medicinal chemist, pharmacologist, and、mm. uh, any type of uh, uh, researcher, and I conduct. To the project. And also,、uh, Taisho is a small company, and also I learned about the patent, intellectual property、mm. uh, strategy. And、uh, during Taisho, stay in Taisho, I learned about、uh, how to submit the intellectual property、mm. or how to、uh, arrange to the IP and what the When the best timing to submit the intellectual property or how do you control? So、mm. that was very important to the biotech company. And、uh, yes. 
I learn by myself and I commit to submit the several pa patent in Taisho and I write the drafting and I uh, negotiate to the patent attorney and negotiate to the patent uh, government patent office so that I have a lot of experience to, mm. to the patent. And indeed, uh, still our patent strategy is so uh, very strong and so that mm -hmm. our initial patent block to the other competitor. So I think a, a project manage experiment and also mm -hmm. IP learning IP strategy is very helpful. It was yep. very, very helpful. helpful. In, in, in to, biotech, to, yeah, makes sense. And, and, and what, when you started your company, what other skills did you have to learn from, from the scratch, like completely new? Completely new is uh, how to get the money. <laughs> so, fundraising. Yeah, fundraising. So during yeah. uh, staying Taisho, we just negotiate with a supervisor or a director to get the fund. And uh, even the big uh, mid-sized uh, pharmaceutical company, they have a plenty enough uh, research budget. So just negotiate. And if uh, we sh run short of the budget, during the year, so we can mm. request to increase the budget. But mm. after the, I established uh, on my company, the fundraising, every time tough, tough. And uh, mm. uh, this is uh, very, very uh, tough. But uh, uh, very luckily, I can survive to 17 years. So mm. we can, so initially, uh, we, as I said, uh, we have a revenue from CRO business yeah. and also for the uh, basic research for, for uh, the, to establish new technology, uh, Japanese government grant, the support mm. grant, research grant. So in the first 10 years, uh, we didn't accept the venture capital money mm. the fund. After es almost establish, after establishing the, our new technology, and then uh, we got uh, fund from venture capital. Mm, okay, so you have a mixed model, revenue grants, you grow, and then uh, you enter a different phase. Okay. Yes, and then uh, the very important thing, and uh, after getting, after we can get the fund from the venture capital. I trash to the CEO business. I never, I never continue. I never continue mm. the CRO business. So yeah. I think uh, we focus on the drug yeah. discovery. So that's the point. So some, some Japanese uh, biotech company still conducted the CRO business so that mm. they, they, Sometimes focus the CRO business and uh, they speed down to to the the drug discovery. Yeah, it's it's a it's a challenging balance. Uh, there are not yeah. many companies that manage to do that, and it's probably it require it's so many factors that can. You, but personally, I think it, they should operate to completely separately. Otherwise, yeah. you have competition for you compete for resources and this is not not good for the science because like but if you have a separate separate i think this can work much much better yes i think so so, uh, so you 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 have your company in sapporo yes right? and so when we started the conversation you said you wanted to bring this biotech ecosystem feeling and and energy also to Japan, like you started the company there because it was already there, some kind of new life science biotech ecosystem evolving. If not, um, I assume you were able to uh, develop it together, like you are part of this ecosystem over the years. So, Yes, so yeah, I think uh, we, as I established the, the my company in Sapporo, they have a meaning. So in Sapporo, many nice 
uh, university, Hokkaido University, and there are many, many good uh, potential uh, technology or seed of the science. Or, uh, but there is no pharmaceutical company, there is no uh, bi biotech company in Sapporo. And uh, there is some gap from the academia and the global pharma and big biotech company. So mm -hmm. someone bring the new early stage project or new seed from the academic and uh, uh, we can manage to, to some mm -hmm. stages and then transfer to the big pharma and the global biotech company. So I want to become the hub or I want to mm -hmm. become the incubator to, to mm -hmm. from the academic science to the professional pharmaceutical field. So, so initially, and uh, maybe that in Tokyo and Kan and the Osaka area, there is some company. Yeah, yeah. But in Sapporo, there is no such a I, company. I never heard about Sapporo. Yeah, I, I yeah. know about Osaka. Yes. Uh, there were also some bio events, I think, in the yeah. last years, but um, I haven't heard about it. It's probably because there are not so many companies except your company. Yes, so I think uh, uh, not Todai, not Osaka University, not Kyoto University. Mm -hmm. uh, there is many, many nice university in local area in Japan, mm -hmm. and but. Uh, Many, uh, bio, there's few and no biotech company pick up such a unique science and to challenge to realize the commercialization and the marketing. So I yeah. want to pick up. This is the first, first ecosystem. <laughs> to, 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 and then uh, we can transfer to the global pharma and global mm. biotech company. We can make a line from academic to the commercial field. I understand. And uh, another point is uh, mm -hmm. the human resources. So there are many, many good uh, students and good talent people, scientists in university, uh, the freshmen, but they cannot stay in Hokkaido. They want because there is no biotech company. There is no mm -hmm. pharmaceutical company. They love support, they love Hokkaido, but they have to move to Tokyo. So, so that I uh, create new uh, job opportunity, so that my uh, ambitious that to yeah. generate, to expand to the biotech company in Sapporo. It's a nice, com it's, it's a great commitment, I think, um, because you're building against something new right from from your experience and you share uh what you do also right now sh share your experience so if you let's let's talk about those those students and and phds who maybe want to start a company or think about how to manage their um, their scientific work and uh, maybe start mm -hmm. a biotech company so you start in 2006 i think um persistence and staying in in the game let's say mm. is very important not giving up but what were as as a founder um, specific insights or or skills that you learned specifically as an entrepreneur i said uh we need find a new uh colleague new friends so in, in japan the scientist has not good communication skill to, okay. so, but uh, I think, uh, like me, so I hesitate to talk with some new, new strange mm -hmm. person, but I have a scientist. I, I am a scientist, but, mm -hmm. uh, I don't know the fundraising. I don't know the managing human resource. So, so that we can find a new person to, and that uh, they, I, I want to involve them to involve mm -hmm. to the company. So, I think uh, not only science, so they, we need a skill to communicate with anybody. And uh, I think uh, communication anytime. So I think uh, new communication give us a new opportunity 
to to the close the company. Indeed, uh, I have two angel investor, mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, so I didn't know well before, but uh, coincidentally, I met them and I speak them, and then they become uh, our in- angel investor. Mm-hmm. So yeah. I think uh, not only the science, uh, I. I'm sure that the communication skill is very important to, and uh, breakthrough <laughs> to the tough timing. Any tough time, so there is there many, many tough timing during yeah. the 17 years. And, uh, yeah. but, uh, meeting to meet with some new person, we can solve. They, they give yeah. some idea. Sometimes they uh, gave the, some fund. And I think entrepreneur, especially the scientists, sometimes scientists very, very concentrate on the own science and uh, mm. they don't want to communicate. But I'm not sure that uh, US based, European based scientists maybe that communicate well, well, but especially Japanese scientists, it's not good skill, not good at the mm-hmm. communication skill, but uh, contact to with new person gave new opportunity and breakthrough. I feel that this is the best learning from the 17 yeah. years. It's probably a phenomenon in, in, in science in general that you're very focused, but you also want to have things to be perfect before you communicate. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, this, it's not always helpful. Generally, they are not perfect. And I like this idea that you said we should communicate in order to solve problems together. Mm-hmm. So it's not only me with a solution to so bringing people together and solve, yeah. solve the problems. And regarding uh, the GPCR field, what do you see in terms of new and emerging technologies that can, I mean, that's a very traditional target space. Um, GPCRs, but are there some new technologies or new trends in this field that, in, like, I mean, your technology platform is already doing uh, transformational research, uh, but are there maybe other technologies or trends that you uh, you can share with us? Mm. So GPCR field is, I said, a kind of revival. So 18, I think 18 years, uh, 1980 or 1990, many pharmaceutical is focused on GPCR drug discovery and many uh, money is uh, the invested the GPCR. And then uh, after the 21st, early 21st century, the many people left from the GPCR field. Mm-hmm. But indeed, I said GPCR, uh, targeting GPCR is very uh, highly, what's the probability of success compared to the other target. And especially the, uh, I'm not sure that the uh, gene therapy or other cell therapy, but uh, targeting GPCRs, we have a uh, last 13 years, we have a uh, good track record to generate mono- generate medicine. So mm-hmm. that, but uh, uh, as I said, uh, uh, current uh, the small molecule has a uh, limited to generate to, to to the new drug for GPCR. So I think even the target revival, but uh, technology itself quite brand new, and uh, mm-hmm. we can uh, expand the GPCR monoclonal antibody field. And, uh, next year or in a couple of years. Mm-hmm. I understand. And uh, last last question, if you if you have a wish, a wish for the entrepreneurship in biotech in Japan, uh, what would it be? <laughs> yes, so so we need the two two things to the in Japanese biotech society that uh, many people can easily move to company to company. So mm-hmm. many, as I said, uh, 
I was stupid guy <laughs> to to, but uh, uh, some uh, researcher first did some researcher that joined to the big pharma, but uh, they moved to the biotech company and they can move back to the big company, and uh, I need the flexibility to to mm -hmm. the person from the less compared to the. U.S. and Europe, the less flexibility in the, even the younger generation, less flexibility to, to, to mm -hmm. move in the company. And the second thing is the fundraising. So, uh, indeed, uh, some, uh, Japanese society has the money in the big company mm -hmm. and keep the money, but they don't want to somehow invest to, to the mm -hmm. new thing. And uh, I think uh, they es establish company or establishment uh, more invest new technology, new new idea. So, so that, uh, yeah, I think uh, in Japan, there's uh, many, many new idea and uh, Japanese science very nice, but uh, human resource yeah. and uh, risk money short of running, <laughs> run yeah, short. I understand. So that uh, if two, two things solve, the Japanese biotech society is very, very rapidly growth mm -hmm. because potential, yeah. they have a scientific potential. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, I can only confirm when I read some, some papers from Japan that, that it's, it's re really advanced, um, but in order to make it scale, it requires what you said. Uh, knowledge, knowledge, flexibility, and funds uh, to implement those ideas. Mm -hmm. Kiyoshi, for, for our listeners, what's the best way to reach out to you um, using the website or your LinkedIn profile? Yes, uh, you can find a LinkedIn. I, 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 I have a LinkedIn mm -hmm. account. Also, uh, you can access to the, our website, the uh, we have some inquire uh, uh, site to accept yeah. any question. All right. In this episode, our guest was Kiyoshi Dakayama, who is the founder and president of NB Health Laboratory from Sapporo in Japan. NB Health Laboratory is dedicated to developing therapeutics by targeting GPCRs using monoclonal antibodies. Thank you so much, Kiyoshi, for joining us today on Founders in Biotech. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.